the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Babu wani kamar da kai Me girma me girma me girma Me girma me girma me girma Babu wani kamar From the heavens and the earth will hear all speak from your throne and I'll hear from the earth for my altar is calling you oh God my altar is calling Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your You're the light of the world You step down to my darkness Open my eyes, let me see it's my prayer, Lord Open my eyes, let me see it. One more time Will you open my eyes?
have done me well You have done me well Jesus You have done me well You have done me well You have done me well I've done me well gathered here and all who are following across the nations of the earth we return thanks we return thanks you are a wonder walking God we return thanks Lord I pray that you will move in a mighty way in our midst tonight bring glory to the name of Jesus and we vow as always that you will remain glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me sincerely express my appreciation. Um, time may not allow me to start, but um, I, was, I was truly overwhelmed not, not necessarily a surprise truly but broken again to see the hand of God when I saw I got to hear that all the overflows were filled and there were people all across the street and I saw the joy the expectation listen there are some things that men cannot do don't be deceived there are certain results that are not within the realm of men. We like to take credit for these kinds of things, but it is unto the king, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. I sincerely appreciate every one of you, your excellencies, members of parliament, um, captains of industry, ministers of the gospel, I honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want to conserve time so that we can do much. I particularly want to honor um, His Excellency, Anim Pius Anim. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I truly honor you. We do not take your presence here for granted. Thank you. Hallelujah. I just want to share a few things and then we will pray by way of introduction this is what God is doing in this city and we're honored to be part of his program I just allow me to perform a function I have many goals in my life by the grace of God and I set one of those goals strangely as a very little boy and the goal was that one day as God allows that through my life the nations in my lifetime and in their lifetime will be able to stand and celebrate my wonderful parents I prayed and I asked God to grant me that wish as one of my life goals 
and I'm truly honored that among the many goals I would be able to achieve that today. I truly am honored to have my biological parents, my father, my mother, and let me request, that's my father, that's my mother. Ladies and gentlemen, please honor my parents. Honor my parents. Alongside my siblings, my entire family members, please honor them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. God bless you. Please be seated. It is an honor for me that they are able to see this in their lifetime. To the glory of the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2 from verse 14. This was the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 and verse 14. The Spirit of God had fallen upon a group of people who had been waiting 40 days with Jesus and 10 days alone. And the Bible records that that event was so dramatic, people thought they were under the influence of new wine. Then the Bible says from verse 14, it says, But Peter, standing up, with the eleven, he lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. 15. It says, For these are not drunken as he supposed, seeing that it is but the third hour of the day. Verse 16. Hallelujah. But this is that. This is that which was spoken by the prophet. Long before this day, there were prophets that spoke about this extraordinary manifestation that a time would come when they would experience the move of the spirit on earth. And Peter stood up and said, this that you see, this is that. Our gathering tonight is based on what I believe is the fulfillment of three prophecies in the Bible. Number one, Joel chapter 2, please, from verse 28. I'd like you to please be patient as we walk through a few prophecies. We are people of prophecy. Joel chapter 2, from verse 28. We're reading down to 32. Please help us, media, Joel, Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterwards prophet joel will say that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men will see visions and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days i will pour out my spirit the bible says i will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke 31 the sun shall be turned into darkness the moon into blood before the terrible the great and the terrible day of the lord verse 32 now he says and it shall come to pass that whosoever calls upon the name of the lord he shall be delivered for in mount zion and in jerusalem shall be deliverance as the lord had said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now read that scripture. It says deliverance will come from two places. Number one, Mount Zion. And then number two, there is a remnant that the Lord shall call. Praise the name of the Lord. Second prophecy, Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house, he says, shall be exalted above other mountains. And he says, it shall be exalted above the hills and people or nations shall flow to it. Verse 2. That they will say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord 
and to the house of the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob is a God of encounters. It was a name that came out of Genesis 32. The encounter that Jacob had at Luz that will later be called Peniel. Hallelujah. And they will say, please keep that scripture. It says, he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Last scripture, Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. From verse 16, Acts chapter 26. This was Paul before King Agrippa giving them the basis for his passion, his drive, and his apostolic work. He said, this was his encounter with the Lord Jesus, but rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness. Both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I shall appear unto you. We're reading to verse 18. 17 now. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Last verse, verse 18. The assignment is very clear. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So we are people of prophecy. We're not just, this is not just an advocacy of men. This is not just a mundane pursuit, an ambitious pursuit of zealous people. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic global family of sincere, passionate, transformed and empowered believers with a mission to replicate the fullness of God's life on earth, to be agents that create the platform for encounters, for fellowship, for transformation and even for revival. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, The love of God and the fellowship. That's where the word koinonia comes from. The participation, the sharing together. It says, Let it abide with you. Let it be with you all. Very quickly before we pray tonight, the first time I've been in this city for longer than most people would know because most of my travels have to be routed through this city and the first time that I had an impression to take the walk to this city was 2013 but whilst having my retreat and through a series of other encounters we knew that this was not the moment and the next time I would begin to have that prompting of the Spirit was three years ago. And the Spirit of the Lord began to lead me and began to open my eyes to that which He would be doing from this city, this nation, this continent. And it was on the strength of that move and like Paul, I wouldn't be negligent to this heavenly call. And this is why we are gathered today. We have a very straightforward mandate. And the Lord asked me while I prayed and prepared. He says to announce this mandate. We're not here just for ministry. There is a very definite spiritual assignment. For which he has brought us by his spirit. Six of them as revealed to me. Please follow me as we just express this and then we'll pray because this is what the lord is going to be confirming all through our stay and time as we build and labor 
and this will also help you and give clarity so that we can release our faith appropriately to benefit from that which God is doing number one our first mandate in this city and in this season is to help actualize the global harvest of souls the first reason why he has sent me here is to stand in partnership alongside with the men and women of God the vessels of God in this city already doing great things for the kingdom to see to it that this global harvest that we have so spoken about that it becomes a reality Acts chapter 2 please from verse 36 media help us will run through a few scriptures it's important that we we establish our convictions upon the integrity of the Word of God therefore this was Paul speaking now after the Holy Ghost came upon them therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ we're reading to verse 39 next verse please now when they heard this the Bible says they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do this were a confused people in need of salvation then Peter said unto them repent and be ye baptized every one of you no exception in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost I like verse 39 please read with me if you can see it projected ready read for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many the promise of salvation and the ministry of the Spirit the global harvest is a mission and a promise to everyone there are about 7.2 or they're about getting to 8 billion people on the earth and as far as we know my statistics may not be accurate but it's just a little over 2 billion people that we have as professing Christians and we're not talking of vetting this by the standard of God's Word are we together that means we have well over six or so billion people who are yet to call upon the name of the Lord and I assure you until that happens Christ will not return the narrative we have is that Christ will return soon and that is true but he's not going to return carelessly we are people of doctrine the Bible states very clearly the conditions that must be met for his return it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness it does not have to be received but there must be a witness that it was taken across the nations of the earth then and only then the Bible says the end will come the church is a major determining factor as far as the return of Christ is concerned so scripture says we can look forward to and we can even hasten the day of his coming hallelujah Acts chapter 16 we'll read from verse 27 this is the doctrinal basis for why we are here do you know why I'm taking my time to share this because unfortunately we live in a world where the moment people begin to see the supernatural manifestation of God's hand and the investment of God's spirit upon individuals usually most people do not understand the labor in the spirit that would have brought such dimension of grace and it is people will easily generalize it and just make it think that is some fetish or demonic thing we are defending the grace that has been given because we know what it will do praise the Lord graces are defended with doctrine the integrity of God's Word Acts chapter 16 please verse 27 let's hurry up media please help us Acts 16 and 27 this was the second incident in scripture where men would have to ask what do we do 
the keeper this was this was paul in prison when the earthquake came there was a miracle and the keeper someone help me in my screen this the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and the bible says seeing the prison doors opened he drew his sword and wanted to kill himself the bible says and then peter beckoned on them and he said no 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 no. we are safe he cried out with a loud voice please someone can you help me walk on the screen i'm not seeing the scripture let me have to open the bible myself okay thank you he cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm he says for we are all here next verse very instructive the bible says he called for a light and when he had come let me narrate it very quickly he said what shall we do it was a question when he saw the spectacular hand of god the jailer came and said i am in need of this that you have received and peter took time to articulate the gospel and the bible says from that encounter that man and his entire family were saved romans chapter 10 i think perhaps is the most accurate um, theological presentation of the need the need to get the gospel to the ends of the earth but the need to find men who are hungry and available romans chapter 10 from verse 13 here's what he says it says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord that is the law you cannot be saved just by good intention you cannot be saved by an inheritance no that you came from a good family and then you inherit salvation no it says how then 14 shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed it's a question number two and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard verse three how shall they hear without a preacher so it starts with their believing but that the problem with the believing is their hearing the problem with their hearing is there is no one to speak in the first place and then the bible says that how shall they hear except there is a preacher then it says how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings glad tidings of good things let me tell you i truly believe in the name of jesus christ that there will be such a move of the spirit that will bring a global harvest a global harvest it is important that men be saved look up please whether we believe it or not i assure you that one day jesus is coming and one day we are going to wrap up the activity upon this earth as much as we know the pandemic has made us to believe that it is easy to bring creation at a standstill within a moment even within a twinkling of an eye but the question now is that we cannot sit and fold our hands and allow people go to hell every day while we keep doing church we keep playing religion we keep making a name for ourselves i tell you in the name of jesus the days of celebrity christianity is over god is looking for a people who are passionate and serious and committed to see kingdom come more than their reputation this is not some sarcastic statement the spirit of grace himself will make it happen so this is our first mandate the global harvest of souls mandate number two our second mandate in this city and even in this season is equipping and building believers onto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word part of the principles or the assignment of a true apostolic ministry is to see that believers mature so we equip and build believers onto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word Matthew chapter 28 please from verse 18 Matthew 28 and verse 18 
Jesus gave us what we call theologically the Great Commission and here's what it says many of you have not taken out time to read what Jesus said he didn't just ask us to preach the gospel I read from verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me the word there is exousia authority given to me in heaven and in earth 19 it says go therefore on the strength of that ability and teach nations not just preach teach nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost verse 20 it says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo if it is true you are committed to doing that i give you a guarantee that my presence will go with you there is a guarantee my power and my presence will go with you whilst you focus on teaching discipling and mentoring nations the only way to attain unto maturity in the body of christ is the exegesis of doctrine discipleship the principle not just not just a denominations approach to christianity that people are grounded in the truth our spiritual vacillations are an attestation a proof to the fact that we are not grounded challenges sweep believers left right and center and very little things make us to doubt our convictions paul said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded are we blessed ephesians chapter 4 the bible says from verse 11 it was for this reason ephesians 4 verse 11 paul was mentoring the church in ephesus because of the overwhelming desire to mature the church he gave on to some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers we read to verse 14 he says for the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ 13 it says till we all come that means this is a possibility we can come to a state in the spirit called the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ last verse it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive we have to mature the body acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says they remained and they continued in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer this is the formula that matures believers the exegesis of truth the communication of doctrine so that believers are grounded you can pick at random come you can pick this gentleman from a secular approach now and say for instance this gentleman wants to be a medical doctor there is already a predefined curriculum he does not guess his way around it his assignment is to effectively pass through that system are we together now give him six years give him seven years give him eight years of diligently advancing through that system the end of that advancement is that he will become a doctor there has to be a methodical approach to our maturity the reason why there there is a random approach to christianity is because the mentorship systems are not defined they are largely opinionated they are not based on doctrine so you cannot guarantee a predictable spiritual outcome a doctor in university of joss or abu for instance and a doctor in Unilag or UI, if they come together, the variance should not be very wide because it should be a common doctrine that made them doctors, a, a common body of knowledge. So when a Christian from this region or this place or that place, when the variance becomes wide, we have to examine the curriculum that was used. 
and largely the curriculum may be based on personalized dealings this is where the tragedy of establishing believers come from personalized dealings are not a biblically approved strategy for discipleship they can be a support system when doctrine is the foundation are we blessed two doctors who have never met still by this example can literally meet for the first time in a theater and not be afraid of one another they trust their competence their competence is not based on their names their competence is based on who taught them and the standard that was used we must raise our standard to a predictable spiritual level if god does not pride in remaining a mystery doctrines systematize our knowledge of god Are we true so we must equip believers to mature so that as much as possible the foundations of the Christian faith Hebrews chapter 6 tells us about six pillars that represent the foundation of the Christian faith we may differ in certain approaches personality differences that's that's all right but the foundations that make up the christian faith there are pillars and if we deviate on those pillars we are no longer christians are we together this is our second mandate to help support what god is doing within this city and to mature believers you see in this kingdom the message is what gives value to the messenger the messenger is not independently valuable the value of the messenger is the quality of the message that he has received he says this is the message we have heard from the beginning what really makes us powerful is not personality no it is the strength of the message and the dexterity of that message we communicate it with confidence because it did not come from us it only came through us are we together number three very quickly what is our third mandate our third mandate as given by god in this city and in this season is to be instruments of completion and balance this is the third mandate that we have to be instruments of perfection or completion and balance Colossians chapter 1 when you read from verse 28 and 29 please give it to us media to Colossians chapter 1 28 and 29 he said whom we preach warning every man and teaching man in all wisdom that we may present every man complete the word perfect there does not just mean mature it means complete in Christ Jesus verse 29 it says for this cause or whereunto I also labor striving striving to reveal dimensions that need to be captured in our experience Acts chapter 2 we'll read verse 20 then we'll go to 27 and 28 Acts chapter 2 from verse 20 did I get that right? I beg your pardon. Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. From verse 22 to 28. The Bible talks about a very interesting man. Please look up. Very interesting story. The Bible says that there was a man. And when he had landed at Caesarea, he went up and saluted the church. And he went down to Antioch. 23. The Bible says, and after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and so on and so forth, strengthening the disciples. Next verse, 24. It says there was a certain Jew. Look up, please. He was called Apollos. He was born at Alexandria. Notice, look at this man's qualification. Dear servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you have this kind of man, you will almost ordain him immediately. This is exactly what we're looking for. The Bible called him an eloquent man. Number one, number two, he was mighty in scripture. 
number three he came to ephesus and then the bible says this man was instructed so he submitted to mentorship he was not a rebel he was instructed in the way of the lord then the bible says he was being fervent in spirit and he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord but he knew only the baptism of john imagine that that man's book was the only book you had to read in your life you will be sound but only knowing the baptism of john listen no matter how accurate we are we only see in part and we communicate the parts that we see now the challenge for a very long time is that i think maybe because of our personalities or through our, our limitation in growth and maturity we have mentored people into believing that every dimension out of our sphere is not necessary so we have different varieties of imbalance we have people who are mighty spiritual people but they are poor they are broke they hate influence and they remain in servitude then we have those who aspire to be great they become mighty men captains of industry but they do not believe in the reality of their spirit man their health we have people who ignore leadership and administration and then they are the lower levels of life we we have those who love these dimensions but hate god there is need to communicate what the Bible calls the whole counsel of God. Every dimension of God was designed to help you believers into that stature. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant and do not sustain the requisite level of influence to make kingdom come happen. Are we together so we have many well-intentioned believers they love the Lord they are vibrant spiritually but there are other weightier matters the school fees of their children their life their responsibility as citizens of a territory because they have not been so mentored to appreciate these dimensions as also being spiritual we have people who love God, they go to church, but do not have the intelligence and the mentorship to raise visionary children. And society is the effect of that kind of teaching. There has to be a balanced communication of the whole counsel of God. That it is still spiritual to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, prayer, praying in the Spirit, sound in doctrine, excellent in life you are an agent of transformation you are a visionary person they can go together you don't have to choose one at the expense of the other this happens when we help bring balance now let me say something very quickly it is easy to observe faults it is easy to observe mistakes it is easy to observe that a man of God is limited. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Not everybody is given that office. Just because you observe something wrong does not give you the authorization to talk about it. There are people designated the same way nobody can just arrest anybody in a society. No, there are people designated and mandated to see to it. That this happens the challenge is that several people assume judgmental standpoints and everyone is quick to show that this man of God is not teaching this is not doing this right is a very wrong perspective the first requirement to be given the grace to correct the body is love not revelation the, the zenith of transformation in the kingdom is not knowledge, it's love. And until you can pass the love test, not love for God, love for men. So that when you are communicating truth, you communicate truth from the standpoint of love, not the standpoint of hatred and sarcasm. Is God blessing us? So our mandate is to help, to support these falling dimensions in the body of Christ to help bring balance to the body of Christ that we come to a point of appreciation that no matter how powerful we are the best of us is only an effective member
number four what is our fourth mandate our fourth mandate in this city is to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of God through miracles signs and wonders bringing healings deliverance restoration breakthroughs to men I believe in miracles oh yes I do I believe in signs and wonders I believe in the supernatural I believe that God is able to superimpose into the affairs of men and bring divine possibilities into this our world Christianity started supernaturally it is maintained supernaturally if it ever culminates as far as our work on earth is concerned it will be supernatural to ignore the supernatural for whatever reason is a faulty understanding we must embrace the supernatural acts chapter 2 and verse 22 the bible tells us that jesus as our high priest and pattern man he says that jesus of nazareth a man approved of god among you by miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him in the midst of you signs and wonders are a system of attestation that god brings upon a man and upon a people that they truly are sent from him please look up let me tell you sincerely people are going through real problems the challenges that plague people are real and whilst it is true that our primary purpose for seeking God is not things because we love him that's why we want to be like him however in the economy of God there is always a provision that whilst you seek him there are tokens there are consolations to your Christian experience there are proofs that show that it pays to serve Jesus in fact here's how the Bible puts it oh taste and see he didn't just say believe alone oh taste and see that the Lord is good Isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy from verse 1 to 3 Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3 the Spirit of the Lord he said is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound we're reading to verse 3 verse 2 says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord all by the anointing and the day of vengeance of our God all by the anointing to comfort those who mourn not just by skills of empathy it takes the anointing to comfort those who mourn next verse verse 3 it says to appoint unto them that mourn still by the anointing to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified say amen in Matthew chapter 10 please give us verse 1 then we'll go to 7 and 8 Jesus having mentored the disciples Matthew chapter 10 from verse 1 the Bible says when he had called the 12 disciples he gave them power mm. he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease verse 7 when he sent us listen when Jesus sent us he says as we go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand ladies and gentlemen we were not given just sermons alone it would be dangerous if all we were given was just a sermon verse 8 it says to prove what you just said heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received freely you must give listen in the name of Jesus this is a supernatural generation we are men and women who must trust God to hold superior dimensions of his power the kind of darkness that looms around the horizon will not the devil will not bow just to stories there needs to be a real display of the superiority of light over darkness 
I cried and I prayed and I made a covenant with God. I said, Lord, grant by your grace that no man has to see me twice to be impacted. Once is enough. Because I read in my Bible, there were hardly times when people had to meet Jesus twice. If you met him once, that was the end of it. And the Bible says, looking up to Jesus, it calls him the author, the model, the pattern. Do you know what it means for all of us here and all the overflows and those following online? One dramatic manifestation of the hand of God, genuine sign and wonder, will preach a thousand messages in one. Let me tell you this. I said this, I think, while I was preaching in Roger just a few days ago. And I made a statement. The times that we live in now may not even allow one-on-one -on -one evangelism easily again. You can be talking to someone and they can arrest you and say, why are you talking to this person? Maybe you are a terrorist and they can go and investigate you. So we need something to happen on earth. Listen. I feel sad for the pandemic and we continue to pray and join forces with government to see that this is exited from our region. However, the pandemic taught us that it's easy to get the world to listen. A virus that did not have publicity, a virus that did not have an usher, a virus that did not have music people, it didn't go through any workers training. It came from a small city and forced the whole world to pay attention to it. Now listen, in the midst of that pain, read the writings on the wall. God is showing us the ease with which the nations can come to their knees. The pride of kings, all our intelligence combined. The Lord is returning us back to days. These things were not parables, except we don't believe the Bible. That one of these days, the sun will stand still again. That one of these days, hailstones will come from the heavens again. That one of these days, manna will come from heaven again. Listen, this is not just some motivation that a preacher is bringing. No, I believe the Bible. Let God be true and all men liars. That in one day, 20 dead people come back to life. And while you are settling on that testimony, God is doing certain things in a city that there will be no other news except Jesus glorified, Jesus exalted. I am a student of revival. I have studied a bit. And I have had the privilege to meet some of the people who were mightily used by God. Let me tell you this. If we believe our talking is going to be the only tool and the only instrument to bring the global harvest, I want us to think again. Our fathers, listen please. There were times in the history of the church where people like Charles G. Finney would walk through cities just praying. And suddenly things will begin to break out. The world's revival, the Azusa Street revival, with the one-eyed evangelist William Seymour. There has to be a display of the power and the glory of God again. If this does not happen, I assure you someone will rise and shut the church one day. There has to be the jealousy of God revealed among his people one more time that I am still God. I believe in miracles. I assure you, you will not go back home the way you came tonight. I believe in miracles. I believe in healing. I believe that demons can be casted out, should be casted out, always, not once. I believe that God can give men speech. I believe that God restores. I believe that time is a concept that is only a mystery in the world of men. God who does not dwell whether in eternity nor we say he dwells in eternity. No, 
eternity is still time it's just a summation of infinite dispensations the realm of God is now and from that realm he can manipulate any other thing to square up with the counsel of his will this is what I believe this is what this ministry stands for hear me people of God hear me great city of the FCT and our global family in the name of Jesus we are stepping into superior dimensions of grace one of the things that a dear prophet of God told me before he went to be with the Lord he said Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumro he said do not die with this anointing when your days are coming to an end find young men transfer this grace to them mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight graces are falling here tonight for the kings to arise for revival to return for the kings to be born for revival to appeared to me one of the things that happened was that light came from him into me and in a separate encounter he told me he said in every city and in every nation I send you that light that came from me to you there must be people within that region and that territory that that light must come upon I believe in miracles I believe in signs I believe in wonders I believe in the manifestation of the power of God as a revelation that you can look at a man and tell him be lifted whether politically whether in business listen let me tell you this listen let me say this there are veterans in business here veterans in politics can I tell you politicians here please find peace this is not the preacher that will manipulate people for gains. We don't draw people, we make them. There is a grace. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Listen, while it is true that we continue to submit to his majesty in awe, we cannot deny what he has put upon us it is true and it is for the nations that you remain at the same level no sir no sir no sir no sir it's impossible you see your life is limited by the kind and the dimension of grace that is upon you it says thou anointest my head with oil but i see what is on my head by looking at my cup it does not anoint the cup so i look at your cup to know what is on your head for instance you see every mountain is relative to the grace that confronts it that in one day all doors open in one day your destiny is shifted to it let me tell you this there is nobody who lives what works. Human beings are intelligent. God built us with intelligence. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in supernatural manifestations. My brothers and my sisters, that while you are thinking about rent, God is already planning your house and He can come to you. And this is, listen, this is, this is not some motivation. Is his hand upon you? You've taken away the sorrows away. You've given me peace undeniable. So no need to fear, cause you're always with me. You're
You're my Father, my heavenly King. He's taking the pain and the sorrow away. He's given me peace on the night. Cause you're always with me You're my father My heavenly Hear me That you can contact a grace A grace That can turn your life around These are not graces That are limited to territories No, no It's the workings of the Spirit. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I believe so. Come on, have the new season. Yeah. Yeah. already over your life that in the name of Jesus every door that stands closed over your life here right here in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven whom we serve inside all of the overflows across outside on the streets following from everywhere in the name of Jesus that door opens now a father be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have to pray. Two more. And then we'll pray. Number five. What is the fifth mandate? Our fifth mandate is to help strengthen the unity of the body of Christ that's one of the things that I believe that God is going to be using us to do in this city that in the kingdom if one gets it right and the rest failed we failed Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the Bible says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come it says they were gathered together in one accord please say after me in one accord that was the condition for the Holy Ghost to come imagine that the Holy Ghost just came on one man and left the rest no there was a threshold level of unity listen no matter how spectacular our individual manifestations are we have not come to the slightest comprehension of the dimension of kingdom come that can happen in our territory when we become a coordinated force Ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 1 to 7 just write it down for the sake of time the Bible talks about unity unity first Corinthians when you read from verse 12 first Corinthians 12 from verse 12 to 27 Paul himself was speaking let's go there let's look at that scripture first Corinthians 12 from verse 12 it says for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ 20, verse 13 it says for by one spirit ye are all baptized into one body whether ye be Jews or Gentiles whether ye be born or free and have been made to drink into one spirit 14 it says for the body is not one member but many now he says if the foot shall say because I am not the hand I am not of the body is it not therefore of the body next verse and if the ear shall say because I am not the eye I am not of the body is it therefore not of the body if the whole body were an eye where will they be hearing if the whole body were Joshua Selman 
where would be the dimensions that came from our fathers in this land and everywhere listen we must trust God to be matured and secured two words matured and secured enough to appreciate and celebrate the diversity in the body without intimidation and with genuine honor are we together the unity of faith let me use this opportunity to say this that by the grace of God our coming is not some childish advocacy to outshine and to show exclusivity no we are students of history and God has helped us by his spirit to attain onto a level of maturity where we come into a city first in honor to the graces and the vessels seated here are veterans of the gospel some of the pastors and leaders here these are people who have served God for many years with dimensions of grace there are fathers in this land this land is not barren of people that God is using we are only coming as participants and contributors privileged by grace so that saying of Saul killed 1,000 David killed no 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 let it never be heard from you are we together now yes this is not an advocacy to downplay and demean the diligence of the men and the women of God in this city it is true that we operate at different levels of graces but let me tell you this every single man who calls upon the name of the Lord sincerely and is laboring in word and doctrine is deserving of honor anywhere in this city and anywhere in this nation do not be part of people who downplay the relevance it is a difficult thing to bear the burden of the name of the Lord there are people who have who have sacrificed their health their families the average believer may never know what an average man of God goes through to sit with that the name of Jesus is lifted please hear me we are a people of honor I'm saying this because of some of the great things that have happened chances are that when you see crowds all the overflows filled down outside the roadside these are the kinds of when you see this kind of scenery the next thing is we paint this celebrity mindset Joshua Selman not so we are dead enough to allow the church rise beyond our reputation believe me if I had my way if I have a way of hiding so you don't see my face and just hear my voice I will be more than delighted to listen let me tell you this I'm, I'm being open like this so that you see that this thank God for the excellence but we're not acting here this is a sincere communication of the life and the power of God to see kingdom come until we love the body more than our individual achievements the man who is talking to you is not a failure I have seen things that most people may not see in their lifetime I tell you with all due respect and humility God has honored me beyond my wildest imagination so this is not from a standpoint of weakness and sarcasm but do not make the mistake of Esther while she was enjoying the palace she forgot that the reason why she was in the palace was for others and Mordecai warned her and said they may finish us here soon they will discover you're a Jew and don't you think you will be spared remember somebody left that position for you to come and Esther said ah let me come back to my senses and focus on the assignment rather than my office if I perish let the office perish but let the assignment continue is God helping us here I'm saying this because there are many younger ministers scattered around coming to draw inspiration and I pray that you don't draw a negative inspiration we need to trust God to tone down our arrogance as a generation we insult fathers we insult everybody just because some of them may not have seen the light to the degree we have seen it is no license revelation that does not produce humility is eating of the tree of good and evil hallelujah anywhere you see a father of faith in this nation honor them some of us may probably be in, come from backgrounds that are very conservative now God lifts you and gives you a voice 
and you see everybody and ignore them no honor them sincerely let it be from the depth of your heart are we together the unity of the body there are few denominations have not preached it and sometimes doctrinally speaking I would have back-to-back -back ministrations and the doctrinal concepts of the denominations may vary so wide yet I have prayed and said Lord grant me the grace to maintain my spiritual convictions and yet have the flexibility to navigate through the body and still be a blessing if the whole world listened to only me I would destroy the world You will think the world will be a better place listening to only me. That's the deception that has brought down great people. No. So hear me. In as much as Koinonia is the platform here, let me tell you, my heart is more than this ministry. My heart is kingdom. Kingdom. I love the kingdom more than Koinonia. I will give up Koinonia a thousand times so that the kingdom will be advanced. This is not acting. This is true. If it means me coming down from the pulpit and never preaching again, if that is the condition for the kingdom to advance, then this will be my last sermon. I love God that much and I love his body that much. This must be our passion. Someday if Christ tarries, no matter what we achieve and no matter what we do, we're going to be lying down lifeless. There used to be an old hymn that says, fading away like the stars of the morning. You still remember it? It says, thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling, only to be remembered by what we have done. Press for excellence. Maximize the dimension of the spirit committed to you. Let us excel as far as our assignment is given. But in doing so, while you rise, let there be a space in your heart for the body. Is the body rising why I rise? Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instrument of peace. So we have an assignment that pastors can again hug themselves and say, I was blessed by your message and not go and listen to it in secret and come out and act like I've not followed. No, 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 no. That we can celebrate one another and say that miracle i saw it what a mighty manifestation of the hand of god we must be secured and confident enough that someone can be organizing a crusade and a pastor who may not even be close to him can say i'm paying for 50 buses just tell the pastor a man of god who loves god and loves kingdom has done this i'm not looking for any repeat any applause on stage once it is kingdom come and it is sincere men of god we are men of god but we are men we must manage the men so that god will be glorified The unity of the body of Christ is important. He says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you heal the sick. Not when you do all the things you do. Can I tell you this? Let me give you an assignment, my dear people of God. Now you are connected to this vision. Make up your mind that in the name of Jesus, you will be part of the agents, let's start from tonight, that promote peace. Honor men of God. If you have to talk, let it be honorable. If it's not honorable, pray rather than talking. Yeah. 
it is such a blessing for a man of God to see a text message from someone who is not even his member to say just to let you know you are doing a great work we are benefactors of your obedience please keep at it we are praying for you men of God are men they are just men who were helped by God to serve his purposes are we together This for me is one of the biggest assignments. It is my desire to see the time when sincere people who are doing great things for God can stand and will let the nation know again that the church is not a news and to civilization. Our hearts and our desire is to see the nation's worship listen listen right now make up your mind that it does not have to be your pastor alone to honor that person if that person comes upon the name of the Lord some of you have neighbors some of you have churches close to where you live trust God for grace and one day surprise them you can buy a bag of rice and just take it to an unknown man of God what for i'm not used to this you tell him it's a new season god is doing something new in this don't be surprised if the man of god is suspicious and afraid we have been wounded many times so what church do you belong it's not necessary we call upon the name of the lord and we have discerned that you love jesus this is our contribution to your efficiency and we watch the wonder working power of Jesus in this city no matter how anointed we are divided we fall hallelujah number six what is our sixth mandate in this city our sixth mandate is to help become a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and national transformation this is the sixth mandate that we have come with to this city a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and national transformation and i'm so honored and blessed to have veterans our fathers in politics and government they are members of parliament people here from the presidency the senate so many honorable members just very few of them were honored i'm aware and i apologize we truly honor you and it's simply an attestation to the grace in acts chapter 17 and verse 6 they called a certain people these that turn the world upside down there is a level of visionary leadership and national transformation the church it's not supposed to end its impact just within members we must move beyond the border of church and invent by the spirit of god a formula that is able to bless all and sundry regardless of religious affiliation regardless of political affiliation until we introduce a dimension of god that our sociology can relate to they have a right to think we're a nuisance in Daniel chapter 2 when you read from verse 46 to 49 the Bible tells us about Daniel and his friends it says then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshiped Daniel imagine that level of leadership and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders unto him 47 watch a very big lesson here the king answered unto Daniel and said of a truth it is that your God is the God of gods and the lord of kings a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldest reveal this secret 48 it says then the king made daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler of the whole province of babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of babylon so christians can go this far next verse 49 then daniel requested of the king 
now this scripture every time i read it i am amazed look the level of honor that happened to a man in one moment yet he never talked about it he requested of the king he said if i stand alone i need support systems of like-minded believers therefore king let me use my influence now in leadership appoint for me shadrach meshach and abednego over the affairs of the province of babylon he says but daniel sat in the gate of the king what a leader we must trust god for grace to stand in partnership with veterans of government to restore visionary leadership we must change that narrative about africa that we are just a people who are out to get historically we've been a people deprived and when you come from a foundation of the of deprivation there is there is an economic and sociological rehabilitation that must happen to your mind otherwise when you access power you will view power from the lens of your pain this is what is happening it doesn't mean that the leaders are evil people are sincere but sincerity is not the only seed for transformation it takes strategic intelligence not just from a sociological standpoint we must import intelligence that is not affordable in the world of men for as long as we keep praying in tongues alone and just fasting and falling down in church alone and it ends there there are dimensions of spiritual reality we may not be able to capture but i look forward to times where people will love god so much in the parliaments they will come up with policies they will come up with ideas our country can work our regions can work our continent can work it only takes an allowance and let me tell you this this is the reason why God has granted us grace. He said, I set you above nations, kings, not only to uproot, but to build, to plant. When you plant a thing, it's because you want it to grow. So they that be planted in the house of God, there should be growth. They should flourish in the courts of our God. Hallelujah. This is one of the reasons why we don't just preach alone. We have been able to help well, for the first phase, the school of ministry, and I trust that God will help us to partner with very visionary bodies to help rehabilitate people, not just complain and say, our uh, young people are dying. We have to come up with policies, more than gifts, policies. A gift does not change. Transformation is what really, really changes. There are many of us here, we have this vision, but that impetus, the drive, The limit of our influence should not just be pulpit alone. A true apostolic grace is not even a preaching grace. A true apostolic grace is a governmental grace. Titus 1 verse 1 comes from the word apostolos, a sent one, an envoy, a communicator and a defender of a government. The true assignment of the apostolic is territorial to coordinate the boundary of God's program per dispensation. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata pa kotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.